the Gospel of John, chapter 11, John, chapter 11, Gospel of John, chapter 11. And as we were praying for the service, the Lord said through the prophetic mass that we are going to have a celebration in this place. We have already witnessed that the celebration has already started. It can continue by faith. We believe that to the end of the service, there, is, there are still actions of justice being operated here. Prepare your heart by faith. Don't leave the service today in the same way you entered. Blessed be the, the Lord. We're going to read only verse 25 John 11 25 the Bible says the following Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live let us read together Jesus Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me Though he may die, he shall live. The church may be seated. The group will be praising the name of the Lord. In the same fellowship, let the Lord visit you. Bring joy to our heart with the joy of salvation. Let's be the name of the Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. The text that we just read, it speaks of one of the stories that's most intriguing, most wonderful, that happened in the times of Jesus. Here we just um, mentioned an incident that happened in a family of people that were greatly loved by the Lord Jesus. People that met him and that gave themselves to him with uh, full hearted and begin to live in fellowship with him. There was a relationship. They, w they visited each other's house and Jesus speaking to them. And interesting that the first contact of a member of this family with Jesus was in a dinner in which a man called Jesus for um, a dinner and in this dinner the, the head of the household didn't treat Jesus with respect. We treated Jesus with indifference and it is interesting that uh, the custom of that time when you receive someone at home the walks used to be on foot unless the person was rich, well off and the wind and the sand the hospital conditions of the desert um, urged that a person that received a visitor to offer him a vessel with water for him to wash his feet because of the dust but also to refresh from the heat of that walk it is common that they offered oil to uh, be applied to the hair to treat it for the dryness of the walk where there may have been a storm of a sandstorm or wind so when Jesus entered into the house of that man Simon and because Jesus was all-knowing he read was what was in the mind of that man and he said in the moment in which the sister of Lazarus there were three siblings Lazarus Martha and Mary and in this dinner in the house of Simon Mary had had a meeting with the Lord Jesus but she wanted because of what she had heard that Jesus operated wonders and miracles and because he was the son of God so, so what did she do and knowing that she was a sinner and recognizing that she was a sinner the Bible says that she did everything that the, the head of the household had not done she cried at God at Jesus feet and with her tears she washed Jesus' feet and she dried his feet with her hair and she brought a, a small vessel with oil and she anointed the head of Jesus in his hair and at the moment when she was crying she had her feet close to Jesus' feet and she kissed his feet and at the moment in when the head of the household saw he, if he said, he would have said, if this man knew that he was really the son of God, he would never allow this woman to come close to him because Mary had a obscure past with sin, like any one of us when before meeting Jesus, and her her, puta her reputation was well known. And when Jesus, he was able to understand the mind of Simon that had thought about that. Jesus' response answer was the following I entered into your house, you didn't kiss me, it was common uh, to show that you were a good host you didn't kiss me, you didn't give me water to wash my feet and you didn't anoint my hair and in other words, it was nothing, none of what you could have done to any other person you didn't do this for me, being the Son of God but this woman, from the time I entered she doesn't cease to take care of me and to do with me what was supposed to have been done. And this uh, prophet prophetic action and actions of Mary, she was showing that she was dependent. She was recognizing that she was a sinner. 
and she was doing what prophetically was pointing out to the life of a servant of God, a man that walked in the presence of God, someone that gives worth to the love of Jesus as their only Savior. And she cried, and with her tears, she washed Jesus' feet. And how many times we crying at God's feet, seeking the face of the Lord, we don't ask, for, don't we ask for forgiveness and of our sins? Go, on, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a flawed man, a sinner. Each one of us have this uh, sinful nature. But when we go to God's presence and we ask, Lord, transform all these tears into forgiveness. And we wash and we dry with our hair. So our thoughts are connected to God's, to Jesus' feet, which speaks of the path of salvation. And we bring what, what is the most important for us, which is our heart. And that's what this woman did. She spent uh, everything that she possessed with something that was used to annoy Jesus' hair. And this was one of the people from the family of, of the text that we had just read. And the time passed by, and one of them became sick, Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary. He uh, got ill, and infirmity was serious, was not something simple. And as they knew, uh, them knowing of the power of Jesus, who was the Son of God, they said, send a messenger. Send a messenger and tell Jesus that Lazarus is very ill. And the messenger arrived, uh, gave the message, and said, Lord, Martha and Mary, of that brother Lazarus that you know, your friends, they told him to tell you that Lazarus is gravely ill. And the Lord Jesus, he answered something that to our eyes may sound like a negligence, but it was not, and you will understand why. Jesus said, this infirmity is not to death, but is to the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So in here we have an important lesson, and you that enter here tonight need to understand something important. The time of God is not our time. The Bible says that the God's thoughts are much uh, more elevated than ours. And God's time is, is, doesn't work like ours. We have a clock. The brother have cell phones indicating uh, time. And a uh, few have watches on their wrists. And this time has nothing to do with God's time. And Jesus remained whatever, where he was f for two more days, preaching, proclaiming, and curing, and operating miracles. And the Bible says that Jesus even said and explained uh, as they questioned if he was going to go. And he said, uh, Lazarus, our friend, he's sleeping. But I'll go to wake him up from his sleep. My brethren, when the Lord refers to this sleep, he was giving a message to say that death is not the end of all things. Many people teach that uh, wrongfully. And if you went to this in this place tonight thinking, I'm going through a trial, a tremendous trial, I have a great anxiety and depression that has no end, I have tried uh, this resource in medicine, psych psychiatry, and psychology, I cannot find a solution, but maybe that might be my solution. No. We at the Church of the Lord have the ob obligation to tell you that the death is not the end, but it's the beginning of all things. Because the matter, when the matter it ends here, when we close our eyes f to this life, we have to give an account to in the presence of God. And if you have accepted Jesus as your saved, Savior, if you, when you met Jesus, you knelt down at His feet and cried. But if you offer to Him what is the best into your heart, and you have salvation, your soul will rest. It will have rest. Otherwise. You'll be an eternal life, will be a, a crying and grinding of teeth. It's not going to be a life, it's going to be an eternal death. So, if you may have never heard this, know that there is a hope for you, and death is not a, sol a solution. Because today, you are meeting 
the Lord, which is the Lord of life. Jesus is the Lord of life. And uh, a few said, let us run away because they are trying to imprison you. See, my brother, the disciples were not focusing on what was eternal. Jesus was preaching, Jesus was evangelizing. Jesus was working and taking care of the things of the Father. And they wanted to protect Jesus from something that they didn't have the need to worry about. They were saying, Jesus, they are trying to imprison you. Jesus said, aren't there 12 hours in a day? If you walk during the day, they don't triple because they see the light of this world. And Jesus was referring to the re revelation, something that goes beyond the ladder. Because beyond the, of what we are reading here, there is something that is deep, which is called revelation. It's like a light. If this environment was completely dark, we would not see each other. We would not see the objects, the, obstacle, the obstacles. We, may, we might trip and hurt ourselves. But when the light is lit, everything is revealed. We see and we identify the brother, the sister. We identify the objects. We walk in safety. And Jesus is telling them, I'm light. I'm the owner of all things. I'm the owner of the time. I'm the one that can do all things. There's no way for us to trip. It was a way of inviting. Jesus was saying, "Invite with, uh, walk with me and you're not going to tri trip. You're not going to be false. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. And Jesus goes then, goes towards an, and the path, and he says, Lazarus is dead. First he says, Lazarus is just sleeping. Let, let us wake him up. And then soon after he says, Lazarus is dead. Because Jesus wanted them to understand that the physical death, the difference between the physical death compared to the spiritual death. So when Lazarus was definitely dead and humanly speaking, completely dead, then Jesus goes towards there. And then G Jesus goes, arrives and he begins. It's characteristic of us, people crying as humans. We cry and they uh, began to ask him, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. If you were here, none of this would have happened. The crying, the complaints, the murmuring. They knew that Jesus was the Son of God and came with this argument. They came with this complaint. And Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Even if someone is dead, if you believe in me, we'll live. Lazarus, he will be we will resurrect and they answered they understood I know Jesus in the last day he will resurrect in the same way as everyone else they were already thinking about the uh, eternal death and at the moment they didn't believe that the Lord had power to resurrect Lazarus see my brethren how is our nature mass nature the nature of human being that has not have a a real true experience with the Lord Jesus. And they were crying. Even Jesus cried. It is the smallest verse in the Bible. And Jesus see that incredulity, this movement, uh, their berbering. Jesus cries. Because he sees that although they had, had, had seen all the signs, they still didn't understand they were in the presence of the Lord of the Lords, the doctor of God, doctors, and the owner of life. But he was there to reveal himself. He was there to reveal himself. He was there to show that he was the, the path, the truth, and the life. He was there to show that he came to give life and life in abundance. Because he is the Lord of all things. He is sovereign. He is almighty, unknowing, and omnipresent. And he asks, where is the body? That moment was chaotic. You are not saying it seriously. It's been four days since he's dead. For sure, he's already smelling bad. He just didn't even pay attention to those things. He asked, take me to the place where the body is. I want to know where the body is. I don't want to know about the excuse. We, you and I, we have our excuses. But the body is very smelling bad. It's true because the bad smell speaks of sin. Sin is part of a human nature, but Je the Lord is not looking to our sin. He looks to our need of life. 
And this is what the Lord wants you to say. Tell the Lord your, your necessity. Open up your heart where you are and say, Lord, my necessity in this, this and the, this area. Take to the Lord where the bed smell is in the Lord. Jesus comes and arrives to the place where Lazarus was dead, was, was buried, and he gives an order, the same order he's going to give tonight in the church of Pompano. In the name of Jesus, you're going to hear this voice and say, Hear my Lord, I will obey. He said, Remove the stone. And Jesus, we could have thought Jesus is powerful. He could have just de um, destroyed that, that rock and made it into dust. But he said, No, remove the rock. Because he wanted to, that those that were participating in the experience, they needed to know that there is something that we need us to do. He's not going to do it. He's gentle. He's the opposite of the, the enemy of our souls that are trying to break into our hearts. No, he is at the door and he knocks. If somebody opens and hear my voice, I will enter, I will eat with him, and he will eat with me. Here's the invitation of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants you to make a decision. It's your decision. It's the free, free will. If you do make the right decision, we will take possession of an eternal life. They removed the rock. They obeyed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's all the Lord requested, that they remove the stone. And when they removed the stone, there was only one order. Lazarus, come out. He was tied up. He was all wrapped up. And... and uh, the material to be buried and he was prepared not to have life anymore it was a place where nobody wanted to be it was a place where it was uh, dark uh, without oxygen without light without anything it was everything that the enemy of our soul wants for us he wants to put in depression in anguish in sadness in deep sadness syndrome panic syndrome and in the dark place where there is no light, where there is no oxygen, so that we may take possession of something that He wants for us, eternal de death. But in the name of Jesus, He is here calling us, Lazarus, come out. So place your name on this phrase. Place your name on this phrase. And allow the Lord Jesus call you outside, outside of depression, out of the anguish, out of the bad smell of sin. Of you may be living up to this moment, but now it's being presented to you a new way of life. All the everything that was tying you up is no longer tying you. Why? Because if you want today's day of salvation, the Lord promised there was going to be a banquet of celebration. Part of the celebration is you recognizing that Jesus is your Savior. Live in this situation, take possession of a life, even if you even though you don't deserve it. But you just need to be a friend of Jesus. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, they were friends of Jesus. That's why I received this victory. You want to be a friend of Jesus? Jesus is inviting you to be a part of a family that is friend of Jesus. This church, we are friends of Jesus. Jesus is present every night, every early dawn, every visitation, every moment in, in, on which we meet, the Lord is present. And he's teaching us that even when we are dead, if we believe in the Lord, He is the owner of our life. Maybe you entered here spiritually already dead. If you entered in this way, think that everything was over, know that there is hope for you tonight. The Lord has shown that tonight is a night of celebration. And we hope that we will take possession of a blessing. If you identify with this word, if you are in this situation of depression, of sadness, maybe using resources of the uh, medication, the Lord asked me to tell you that He has forgiveness for your sins, like when He did to Mary when she anointed His hair and she cried. He has a promise of eternal life, and even more for this life, victory upon victory, because salvation that He offers, He uh, encompasses victories for this life as well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you enter this place this way, take possession of this blessing. If you enter here thinking there is no solution for you, the Lord once uh, told me to tell you that there, come out, come come out from the dark thing to the house of the Father, come from the place there where there is no oxygen or breath, 
and to breathe the Holy Spirit of God that is present here because He is the one who brought you here. Maybe you entered here having received an uh, answering an invitation from a friend or family member, but the Lord used this family member, this friend, to invite you to be in the place where Jesus is. And the resurrection life, if you believe in me, even if you're dead, you will live. May God bless you and that may leave this place being sure that you have an eternal life with the Lord, knowing that your name is written in the book of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's hear a song in fellowship. Close your eyes if you want. Allow the Lord to visit you, speak to your heart. Do like Lazarus, come out, hear the voice of the Lord Jesus. present. to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as he said this, after saying this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, comes out, come out. And uh, the body came out, with the, his body was still wrapped. And he, he, Jesus said, "Take, uh, untie him and let him go. Now we are in the, in the church and there is a row that you need to take part in the church. We are just instruments of the, the Lord. The worship, the glorification, the message is being brought. We are just instruments of the Lord. We are just servants of the Lord to tell you Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. When you hear the voice of the Lord and you answer, when you come out from this place and you come out of this place where there is no light, oxygen, no life, we will meet the Master, Jesus, the Lord of Lords, the one who died on the cross to save us. And he said, I will come back to take my church. I want to come back to, to those that cry at my feet, at the ones that anoint my hair with oil, those that kiss me, the, the ones that had intimacy with me. The faithful church of the Lord, he's coming to take us to him. And now when you leave this place, you need help. The church, the church will untie you. The church will remove this. What is tying you up? How is it going to do it? With prayer, fasting, early dawns, reading of the Bible, visit to your house, the, uh, giving you, uh, wishing to use something that the world cannot give, which is the peace of the Lord Jesus, the peace that you look for, only Jesus can give you. I sing, the church of the Lord is here at your disposal so you can be a part of this family of friends of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us stand up as the group finish this song. The presence of the Lord is present in real among us. Take possession of the salvation of victory. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord can cure you. Glory to Jesus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the promise of the Lord. Even if he is dead, he will live because the Lord can cure. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now a word of glorification to the name of the Lord. We praise the Lord that everything that generated death and now we bring his life. You delivered us from sin. Every situation that was uh, not good for our soul brought life, light. Blessed be your name for the life that you bring to each one of us. Exalted be your name in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray, finishing the service. If you that, you that visit us, you are very welcome, but don't leave without receiving assistance. We are here at your disposal, the workers and deacons, men that the Lord has filled with the Holy Spirit to go towards you and to desire the peace of the Lord and pray with you, have a conversation, clarify so that you may not have doubt that today your name has been written in the book of life. Amen. May God bless you, Lord. Wonderful Father, have mercy on us. The, so that tonight, everyone that entered into your house may live with the assurance of salvation. Lord, we ask you, your Holy Spirit be moving the hearts into surrendering and recognizing that salvation is only in the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here praising you and ask victory for this week that begins in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We are going to be singing softly so the assistant may happen raise your hand and wait until somebody comes towards you if you want uh, ask someone from the church to raise their hand and keep your hand raised high up until a, um, a deacon is able to give assistance <laughs> 